So, Hotel California. Nice. You're not having a deja vu moment. I have done this before. One of the first videos I did. It's very popular. A lot of people have watched it. However, at the time I did it, sorry, let's get rid of this gun. <laughs> Disgusting habit. At the time I did it, I hadn't developed my idiot proof way of writing things out. And a few people, most people really enjoyed it and, and follow it. A couple of people struggled with the tablature, which is understandable if you're not used to using tab. So what I thought I would do is I've got a little bit of time and I'm just between thinking about what else to do. I thought I'd revisit it with my idiot proof way of doing it, okay? So if you want to hear the track, this is the one that I did originally. This is my little demo. <laughs> did that on the 29th of March etc I don't want to spend too much time fiddling around with um, with looking backwards because I want to get this thing done download this right now before you start okay so put, when you're watching this pause it download this you'll find it on the blue link below all right it's very important you do this otherwise you'll get lost for those people who are new to the channel this is the these are your 12 frets on your guitar these big black lines here are where your capo is going to go at the tw at the seventh fret. Your finger positions are here. Now I've called these E minor B seventh. I'm referring to the shapes. Clearly, if we're playing an E minor shape at the seventh fret, we're not playing the chord B minor, uh, E minor. We're playing the chord B minor. So if you were working with a keyboard player, you'd have to transpose it. But for the sake of guitar players and the fact that guitar players know these shapes, I'm going to give it the name of the shape. All right. So let's get that clear for a kick off. And then you play the shape, and all you do then, very, very simply, is you follow what's underneath. For example, if you see something in a bracket, like you'll see six, five, four, three, two, and one in a bracket, what does that mean? It means you'll do this, you'll play all the strings together. And all the ones that you see, uh, all the independent numbers are the string numbers that you'll play separately, okay? These lines here are telling you where the bars end, okay? Uh, and anything written underneath is just giving you an indication of something that might happen with, with a finger. For example, on this chord here, the E minor, on the last string, the last note, you'll hit the third string, but you'll move this third finger down from here and you'll play it there, okay? And so that's what that means. Other than that, that's probably about the trickiest little bit in it, all right? So I'm going to look at this and I can see six, five, four, three, two, and one in a bracket, and then they say, Four, three, four, two, three. So I see this. This is what I'm. First of all, there's my E minor shape. Are we happy with that? Can you see it clearly? It's all live. This, by the way, so there's no editing. So if I make a mistake, tough. That's the way it is. What live music's all about. So here's our E minor. I've amplified the guitar a little bit just so you can hear it because I'm working on an iPad and the mic's not brilliant. So six, five, four, three, two, and one. It's all in a bracket. So I'm going to go like this. Then I'm going to hit the strings. Four, three, four, two. Then a three. There's your first bar. Then I'm going into the second bar and it's got a one, then a four, then a two, and then a three. And then I'm going to drop this finger to play the three again. If I put that, those two bars together, we've got this. Then I'm going to leave the third finger where it is and swing my first finger onto the fourth string at the first fret. And I'm going to put my little finger on the first string at the second fret, clearly from the capo. Okay? Now again, it's all written down there, so if I feel like I'm speeding along, it's easy when you're watching this again and you're looking at the notes below you. And if you don't get it, then quite frankly, there's something wrong with you because it's simple. Even I can understand it. Okay, so the B7th. Four, three, two, three, one, two, four. That's all we do on that. So that first page. Okay, so we've done page one. 24 pages, so don't panic. Done 25% of it. Cool. Then we're going to go to a, what you will recognise as a D shape. But we're going to take this second finger off. We do not need it. All the chord names are at the top. This is D sus two. Makes no difference what it's called. Could be called Steve for all you care, or I care, or the audience care. Makes no difference. What are we going to do? We've got our shape. We're going to play a four, a three, two, three, one, and a two. 
Now, when you see a four and I put a little dash next to it, that's my way of saying, well, that note is gonna last a bit longer. Okay, we'll talk about phrasing in a minute. This is the, you know, this it's an indication of what's gonna happen. So four, three, two, three, one, two. Still on the D sus two. Four, three, two, five, three, two. And on the last two there, you will bring your finger off. Okay? Because it says open. Again, idiot proof. Idiot proof. Do that again from the beginning of that uh, page two. And then we're going to play our E minor sixth with a added F, C sharp, whatever it is. I don't know. Don't really care. Somebody will tell me if I've got it wrong. Um, okay, that's the shape. First finger on the fourth string at the uh, second fret. And your third finger on the fifth string at the fourth fret. Again, it's all there. The chord shapes are there for you. We're going to play five, four, three, four, two, three. And then the final bar is a one. Okay. Play from the top. idiot proof page three here we are there's our chord shape in this case we've got a couple of bars of C we all know C just the five string version and we've got again you see the little dashes telling you that some of these notes last longer than others so we've got five four three four two three still on the C one five two then it says four and underneath it are the words hammer on so you will do that, a hammer on for those people that don't know, is you will play the open string and you will hammer on to it, okay? I'll play that again from the beginning of that first bar. And you'll finish with a three. Oh, let me play it that again. Ends on a three, I hit a two. See there? So we've done that. Then we go to a G, played like this. All right, don't do it the other way around, play it like this. Uh, and we're gonna start off four, three, two, three, one. Then a two, I'll do that again. Still on the G for the final bar, five, Four, three, six, four, three. I'll play that whole section again from page three. Three quarters of the way through now. Done all that, all done. And then finally, an A minor seven. What's that? It's an A minor shape like this. One there, one there, and one there. You see that? And take that finger off, correct? It's only a two finger chord. Again, underneath it are the numbers five, four, three, four, two, three. So five, four, three, four, two, three. Still on that chord. One, four, three, six, four, three. Put the two bits together. A full B7 this time where we need this finger on. You'll notice that before we didn't bother putting it on. We didn't need it. We do now because we're playing the fifth string. And finally, we're going to play five, four, three, four, two, three, one. Do that again. Five, four, three, four, two, three, one. And what happens then? We start again. And then we start again. And then we start again. And we do that all the way through all the way through the song until it gets to the chorus. Welcome to the hook, which you can find on the internet. I'm here to show you how to play this introduction exactly like you played it on the record. In fact, even when you listen to the guy that wrote it, Don uh, 
but it's Dom Felder. Even when he does a tutorial on it, he, he actually does it differently in his tutorial than he does on the record. He's probably forgotten how he did it because we have to remember that when these guys play or me or anyone go into a studio, when we play it, it's that moment in time that we did it that way that everybody remembers. If we'd have done it again, we'd have played it slightly differently. We'd have hit the second string or the third string, you know. But it's our job now, as we've got to get it the same, especially if you're playing an Eagles tribute band, you know, people want to hear the version that he played on Hotel California, not the one he did in Skegness in 1973 or whatever it was, all right? So it's important we get it right. So from the top. <laughs> go and at the risk of irritating you we're going to talk about phrasing you know when you read music when you look when you look at actual sheet music or whatever you see all these little dots and stuff here da, 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 da. these are all these little crotchets and quavers and all that sort of stuff that tell you how long notes last and where they go and all that sort of stuff now we play by ear us guitar players you know that's just the way guitar players work um so we don't understand what that means so but what we understand is we can hear it and then play it so for example that first lick that we do on hotel california goes jing da 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 now there are crotchets and quavers that's telling us the time of where all the bits go jing da 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 okay and then we have to add the notes to what we've got in our head jing da 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 the jink is where i go jink Da 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 Second one it goes boom da 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 ba 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 boom ba 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 and so on. Now if you look at my other tutorials on this, I go into more detail in those regarding that. I probably piss people off because some people think I go on too much about these things. But if you do not get the phrasing right, folks, you might as well play someone else, you know. If you don't get the phrasing right and you don't spend the time if you're playing by ear to listen to what it is you're doing, you will get it wrong. People think they know songs, you know, if I, you know even me, I'll think I, I know that song, I'll play it. And then as soon as I go to do it, I think, well, hang on a minute, you know, do I really know it well enough to be able to be so accurate in the detail? It's like people who draw. If I said to you, do you know what a horse looks like? You'd say, yeah, of course I do. You say, well, yeah, it's a pencil, draw one. And then you think, hang on, are the ears, where do, where do the eyes go? Are the other side of it dead? Or you don't really know what it looks like until you analyse it and study it, all right? Same with music, all right? If you want to get it accurate and like the records, you've really got to analyse and study. My um, idiot proof things will help you, but they will not help you with phrasing, okay? They just will That's something you have to listen to. They'll tell you what to do, but you have to put the notes. Listen to my other video and do that. Share this with whoever you like, it's free. I can't play the Eagles version, because if I did, then they would, um, you wouldn't be watching this video. So um, this, I promise you, is the nearest you're gonna get to the real thing, it just is. And it's not me just saying that, all my 20 odd thousand people who've watched this or more say the same. So this is the one to spin around to people if they wanna learn it. All right, on that note, I'll see you soon. Take care, hope you enjoyed it, bye.